the eight geographic regions of the United States. In the United States, there are eight geographic regions. These regions are... Oh, wait. Okay, wait. Hold up. Maybe we should start with what is a region? A region is a large area of land with similar characteristics or features, like the desert region of North Africa. No matter what part of North Africa you're in, look out the window and you'll see sandy desert. And that's because all of those North African countries are in the desert region of the Sahara. Oh, so you probably want to know what geography means as well. Geo means earth, graphy is description. So literally, geography means earth description. We will be describing the different ways Earth looks across the U.S. geographic region. And there are... Let's... One... Two, I can, oh, oh, yeah. That's right. There are eight geographic regions in the United States. Some areas or regions in the U.S. are flat. Some regions in the U.S. are mountainous. Some are dry. And some regions are really rivery. Is... Is rivery a word? Anyway, I think you get my point. Here are the eight United States geographic regions you'll need to know. Coastal range, basin and range, Rocky Mountains, Great Plains, interior lowlands, Canadian Shield, Appalachian Highlands, and the Coastal Plain. First, let's start with something that looks a little crazy. No, no, not that. This. This map of the eight U.S. geographic regions. Think you can tell me what each region is just by the shape? Yeah, those are some wild shapes. So let's use a sentence to help us remember where these regions are located. Like any sentence, we read from left to right sentence we'll use to learn the location of the eight geographic regions is, hold on, buckle up, can't, beat, real, gorillas, in, checkers, and chess. Can't beat real gorillas in checkers and chess. How does a crazy sentence like that help you remember where the U.S. geographic regions are located? Well, when you come to this crazy looking map, just put the first letter of each region in each shape, going from left to right. The C in Kant, that's really for the coastal range. The B for beat, that's for basin and range. The R for real, that's for the Rocky Mountains. The G for gorillas, that's really for the Great Plains. The I for in, that's interior lowlands. C for checkers, that's really Canadian Shield. The A for and is really for Appalachian Highlands. And the C for chess, that's the Coastal Plain. Yeah, check it out. One of my newest hobbies, downhill skiing. And I don't waste my time on the little hills. Whoa, looks like somebody wiped out. <laughs> Not going to be me. No, I don't waste my time on the little hills. Nothing but the highest elevations for me. How can you tell I'm at such a high elevation? Well, for one, there's snow here. Temperatures get colder at the higher elevations. And two, not a lot of trees, right? Not enough oxygen to support much plant life up here. I guess that's why it's so rocky up here. Want to guess what region I'm visiting? Hmm, let's see. It's rocky. These are mountains. Hmm, oh, it's the Rocky Mountains. Whoop, there I go. Can you see me? Whoa, how about now? These are some of the highest elevations in North America. These Rocky Mountains stretch from Alaska all the way to Mexico. Oh, one more thing. The Rocky Mountains are so elevated, you know, high up, 
that they contain something called the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide divides or splits the direction that water flows. All water to the west of the Continental Divide flows into the Pacific Ocean, and all the water to the east of the Continental Divide flows eventually into the Atlantic Ocean. Let's hang out in the mountains, shall we? Not quite the Rocky Mountains, are they? These are the Appalachian Highlands. You can tell the Appalachian Highlands don't have those same high elevations as the Rockies. I mean, look, they're crowned with trees and rounded off at the top. The Appalachian Highlands aren't even really considered mountains anymore. Just land that's high, or highlands. But don't be disappointed. They are the oldest mountains in North America, and some geologists believe they just might be the oldest mountains on Earth. Back in the day, like millions and millions of years ago back in the day, the Appalachian Highlands may have been as tall and as elevated as the Rocky Mountains, even with snow on the top. But due to erosion and time, they've been worn down. Because they're so old. Sounds like me. Anyway, those are the Appalachian Highlands. They stretch from eastern Canada down to western Alabama. Excuse me, Alabama. Let's head to the beach. Ah, the flat, sandy beaches of the coastal plain. If you've ever visited any beach near us and fought hours and hours of traffic to get there, you know, like Virginia Beach, and Ocean City, even the Outer Banks in North Carolina, if you've been to any of those places, you've seen the coastal plain. This region is described as having broad lowlands along the Atlantic Ocean. But to me, the coastal plain is kind of boring. It's too flat. See, I've taken up a new hobby, cliff diving. Yep, I prefer the beaches on the other side of our nation, the coastal range. This is where the Pacific Ocean meets the mountains. Rugged mountain ranges like the Cascade Mountains and the Sierra Nevada Mountains rugged mountains they are. The coastal plain also has fertile valleys. To some, it's wine country. But for me, these fertile valleys are raisin country. Ah, uh, check out those mountains in the background. Ugh, check out her bonnet. Well, it's time to say see ya to the coastal range. Okay, I've had enough of mountains. We need to get to somewhere where it's flat. Like the Great Plains. I wonder how it got that name. Anyway, this is where the buffalo roam, or used to roam. The Great Plains are described as being flatlands that gradually increase in elevation as you head west to the Rocky Mountains. Ah, uh, just look at all that... nothing. Now this is more like it. The interior lowlands. You know it's lowland because there are rivers here. And we know that water will only flow where the land is low. The SOLs, you know, your standards, the stuff you have to learn in school. The SOLs describe the interior lowlands as rolling land that has many rivers and broad river valleys. Well, in that description, I heard the word river twice. So remember, water will only flow where the land is low. Lowland, like the interior lowlands. Meep, meep. Time to move away from all that river talk. I can't really swim anyway. Let's go where there's like hardly any water at all. The Basin and Range region. If you've ever seen Wiley Coyote chasing the Roadrunner, you've seen the Basin and Range region. Man, I wish he'd catch that Roadrunner at least once. 
The basin and range region is described as having varying elevations. Varying means different, and elevation is how high something is. So this region has highs and lows, basins and ranges. The name of this region tells you all you really need to know. A basin is a sink in the earth, and a range is a mountain. See, varying elevations, low basins, and high ranges. But within the basin and range region is the basin of all basins, the sink of all sinks, the valley of all valleys, Death Valley. <laughs> Death Valley is the lowest point in North America, 282 feet below sea level. Death Valley is also home to the mysterious moving rocks and is one of the hottest places on the planet. Phew! Are we at the eighth region already? Is this. Uh, okay. If you know where Canada is, you can easily find the Canadian Shield. This map, oh, yeah, I'd never heard of the Canadian Shield either before I became a teacher. Don't worry about it. This map only shows a little bit of the Canadian Shield. It actually stretches way up into Canada. It's described as being wrapped around the Hudson Bay in a horseshoe shape. It has hills worn by erosion and hundreds of glacier-carved lakes. Oh, what's a glacier? Basically, a glacier is a huge field of ice. It can be up to a mile thick. And these huge fields of ice, these glaciers, move very slowly. So that's how all those lakes got there. As the glaciers moved over hundreds of thousands of years, they dug out weaker areas in the ground, and later those weaker areas filled with water, and voila, lakes. Well, I guess that's it. That was the eighth geographic region of the United States. So I guess we're done here. All right, well, don't forget, can't beat real gorillas in checkers and chess, but you could probably beat me. So long. <laughs>